Hello, good evening, how are we all doing? Hope you're well. Feel free to say hello in the comments below. Let me know how you're all getting on. Uh, just wait for a few people to come on this evening because I know there's quite a few people hopefully going to be tuning in. Um, tonight's lesson, we're looking at Apache by The Shadows. Uh, this song probably has a lot of history for me. Um, I learned this song um, probably when I was about nine years old, I think. It's one of the first major songs that I had a look at. And you might be thinking, how does a nine-year-old know about The Shadows? Um, and it was from my dad's, my dad's influence. My dad got me into The Shadows at that young age. I didn't have a clue who The Shadows were. Uh, but my dad got me into The Shadows at a young age. Um, went to see Hank Marvin at the Coulson Hall. And um, yeah, just got really into him. And, and just because it's great guitar music, uh, I was learning to play the guitar, so it made sense to do guitar music. Um, and yeah, I learned pretty much the whole catalogue of The Shadows music. Uh, and this is obviously one of the classics, and I want to share this with you guys. It's a really fun one to do, to be quite honest. Um, to get Hank's sound is actually not too difficult, but it it's, takes a little bit more work than just plugging your guitar and plugging it into an amp. There's a bit more to it, which I'll talk you through how I'm going to do that. Um, it's just a fun one to do. It's a fun party piece that you can play for people. They're going to recognise it straight away. It has a few difficult little parts in it, in terms of the picking uh, on the chor chorus bit. Evening, Wayne. Hope you're well, buddy. Thanks very much for tuning in. Um, yeah, feel free to say hello guys wherever you're watching from and I will call you out and say hello as well. Um, it's a great one, I said it's a really good one to learn, so it's a, it's a fun one. I'm going to do this in a two-part series, this one. I'm going to split this song in two because it's, um, it's not massively long, but it makes sense to split this in two in terms of like learning this and making it easier for you to digest the music and have some time to learn between this week and next week's lesson. Hopefully you've got part one done, ready for part two, if that makes sense. It's one of those ones that I really like you to get down, so I want to give you that time in between to be able to get part one down, ready for part two. Hello Ian, hope you're well. Thanks very much for tuning in. Um, yeah, so first of all, before we get started, just very briefly, I'll talk about tone, um, because we like to, you know, we like to do that every lesson just to sort of check in. And as you know, most of the time I say the same similar sort of things, uh, because a lot of guitar music has very similar sort of tone. Uh, Brendan, hello buddy, hope you're well. Um, so, tone-wise. I'm going into the Marshall, obviously, but through the pedal board, I've got my compressor, as I always say to you guys, it needs to be like, I need to have a little sign that says always on. Um, that pedal is always on, um, it never turns off, it literally stays on the whole time. Um, and the reverb is always on, but it's in the loop. The only thing on the reverb I did tonight is I needed more reverb, so I've turned the reverb up a little bit in terms of the decay on the reverb, I've turned it up, that's the only thing I've done. I need more reverb, so I turned the reverb up, because it's Hank Marvin, it's quite a, sort of, you know, quite a heavy reverb on the sound. Uh, definitely need a delay pedal, okay? To get a really authentic sound, you're gonna need a delay pedal, preferably two. I don't have two here with me, so I've gone for one, um, but I've got one good one. Um, but you could do a two delay pedals to get a really authentic sound and have them running at the same time, different delay sounds, at different delay settings, will sound really good and you'll be really authentic. However, I'm using one. Uh, I've got the Carbon MXR Carbon Copy Deluxe, and I've got it on a dotted eighth setting, which is just a rhythm, a dotted eighth is just a rhythm. Um, and I've got the mix set pretty high, so like 70%. I've got the regeneration, which is like how many times it repeats. I've got that set like in the middle, sort of 50%. Um, and I've tapped in the delay with my foot, so I sort of tapped it in on the delay there. Um, but you want like a slap back is what we call it, a slap back delay, which is like, um, if you have a listen, if I play the note, um, so dun dun, as soon as I play a note, there's a really quick delay, so it's quite quick. It's not like dun, 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 and a big gap in between your delays. As soon as I hit that main note, it's really quite quick. It comes back, it's called a slap back delay, okay? And that's what we're after there, okay? And we don't want too much too much um, uh, regeneration on that note, because I don't want it to go dun, 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 on and on and on and on. I just need quite a short sort of de de uh, delay on that, and it's quite a short um, decay on the end of that note. E evening, Ryan. Thanks very much, everyone, for tuning in this evening. I really appreciate that. Um, right, so that's it. So tone-wise, that's what I'm using. Reverb, delay, must, 100%, you need that. Compressor, I like to have it, but you don't necessarily need that. But reverb and delay, definitely really need that. Um, Strat, if you've got a Strat or a single core guitar, obviously that's a guitar of choice. Didn't decide to do a paint job on this evening to make it red, to make it Hank Marvin red, but green will have to do, bluey green will have to do for this evening. But Strat is a good place to start for Hank Marvin tone, obviously, or uh, a single core guitar. Obviously, if you've got Les Paul or something, you, of course you can play it on that. You can play it on anything. Um, but it's going to get obviously closer to the tone with a Strat or something with a single coil. So Strat's a good start. Um, and then whatever amp you've got, best, basically the best clean amp you've got. Marshall does clean, it does it pretty well, but a Fender would be my preference if I had a Fender amp. Would be the preference on the clean. It just does clean a lot better, I think, in my opinion, than Marshall. Marshall's great for the game sounds. 
Um, it sounds good on clean, but the Fender, in my opinion, is just has that sort of cherry on top in terms of when it comes to clean sound. So Fender would be my choice of amp if I had one. Um, yeah, and then let's have a go. So what we're going to do is we're going to do this as two-part series. So we're going to do this week. I'm going to take you up to the chorus section. Okay, I'm going to give you a week to go away and learn this one. Um, feel free as well, guys. Guys that are guitar stars, I'd love to see the progress. Okay, it'd be really great if you can all get involved in this. I would love to see the videos in the group. And if you want to pop them on the page as well, that'd be fantastic on the MGTB page, the main page. That's great. Um, but the guitar stars in the group, I will give you feedback. Okay, the guys that po post them on the uh, MGTB page, obviously I'll give them. I know I'll look at them, and um, you know it'd be fantastic, I'm sure. But the guys in the group will get that feedback. So like, if you're not getting quite the right tone or whatever it may be, or you need some help with something, you'll have that back and forth from me um, to help you learn this song. Evening, Chris. Hope you're well. Thanks very much for tuning in this evening. Um, yeah, so without further ado then, I'm going to run through the track. So I'm going to play through the whole piece tonight. I'm going to play through the whole track, is reference. I might play through the whole track again next time, just to remind you how it goes. But we're just going to do part one this evening, which is going to take us up to the end of the chorus. Okay? So, without further ado then, I'm going to play this through. Uh, one other thing as well, before I start, sorry, I'm waffling away. Um, ideally, you'd want uh, the whammy bar on your strat. You want that, that, you definitely want that in this evening, because Hank uses the whammy bar a lot. However, um, because I've got another whammy bar guitar, which is downstairs in the cupboard, which I use for the band, which is my music man, I had this guitar fixed bridge. So this has a block in the back, which stops the springs uh, from the, the bridge from moving backwards and forwards. So it's, it's actually a solid strat, it's a solid body strat. It can be, it's reversible, and take the, I can take the block out, um, but I didn't want to do that. So um, I'm not gonna be using the whammy bar tonight. However, if you've got a whammy bar, it's quite nice. I'll be using vibrato to sort of create that sound, but you'd be quite nice to wobble it on the end of each of the, each of the notes that you hold. So, here we go then, I'm going to play through the track. As I said, Guitar Stars will have all full tablature for this one this evening, and you'll have the backing track in. It's the exact same backing track as I'm using this evening. Here we go.
guys. I think I got that pretty much right. I didn't, there wasn't any sort of major issues in that. I think it went quite well. Um, so yeah, it's a great song to learn. There's some really fun stuff. It's a really cool melody line as well that people are going to recognise that song. I remember requesting it on the shadows before, so thanks, mate. Unfortunately, don't own the electric as you... Ah, oh, that's okay. Urbana, good to see you, buddy. Uh, cool. Excellent. Make sure I've not missed anybody else. Feel free to say, to say hello, guys, and then I know you're there, and I will say hello back as I see the messages pop up. Right, so as I said, we're going to get up to... Uh, thank you, Brendan. Appreciate that, mate. Um, so we're going to get up to the chorus today. So we're going to run to the chorus. Um, all the parts up to the chorus, as I said. What's really important is getting the tone right, guys. So if you didn't catch what I said on the tone and getting the right sound, feel free after this goes, uh, this, this live finishes. I said it's going to get de deleted from the main page, but it goes into the Guitar Styles group, and you guys can watch this back, and you can run right back to the beginning, and you can see what I said about the tone and how to get that sound. So if you've got the similar sort of pedals at home, or something that you use to create, you might use a computer or something, the sound plugins or something to create the sound, whatever you've got, whatever you've got to work with, I'm sure we can get a, you know, an authentic sound. I mean, if you haven't got a delay pedal, I mean, it is sort of the, the pedal that you really, really do need for the Hank Marvin sound. If you haven't got it and you crank the reverb up a little bit, you're going to get away with it. Um, one thing I didn't say earlier as well is if you pop it on the bridge pickup for this, anything Hank Marvin, I tend to play on the bridge pickup, which is the one that's furthest away and closest to the bridge of the guitar, okay? Cool. So, intro of the Shadows and Apache, it goes like this. <laughs> doing that vibrato and I'm wiggling the note if you've got a whammy bar that's your point to be using the whammy bar okay I'm using my hand to do it using the vibrato however Hank would be using his um, whammy bar okay so if you've got a whammy bar definitely use the whammy bar this evening so when I'm doing the vibrato with my fingers you'll see my hand wobble use your whammy bar to create that effect okay I've just said I've got a fixed bridge so I'm unable to do that at the moment so it starts on fret 2 on the G string with finger 2 then you go to finger 1 on fret 1 of the B string then finger three bends up a full step and release back to the original pitch. So and then you go two, one again. You're going to slide up on the high E string with finger three up to five. Finger one on fret three of the high E string. And then fret five on the B string to finish that off. So it goes. again and that's your intro okay work on that bit don't move off of that bit okay but just because of timing in the lesson i'm going to fit all of this in up until the chorus however if you're learning this at home spend you know turn turn the video off spend as much time just getting that intro bit down until you got it right and then only then move on to the next part okay the next part is like the main bit i've broken this down called it like intro and verse but it's basically the main melody of the song so it's the main theme of the song and the main theme goes... Happens twice. Thank you, Chris. Nice and simple, okay? Fingers two and three on fret two in the D and the G strings. So you do two on the D, two on the G, and again. And up to four on the D. And then two zero two on the D string, and that happens twice. Again, where I'm wobbling that note with my finger, use your whammy bar. Just a really nice gentle wobble backwards and forwards. Okay, quite subtle, but really effective if you've got a whammy bar. Um, and then it goes up. So the same theme, it just moves up. So you're going to move up to two and three on the G and the B strings. Just does this one once though, okay? So there's two, three, and again, open on the B string, two on the G, open, G, fret two, and then back to the first one. Now the last time, instead of doing two, zero, two, we do two twice. So we go. use your vibrato arm and that's the verse okay that's the main melody that's the main part of the verse and then we've got the fun bit okay this is the pre-chorus section so the pre-chorus 
this is the fun bit where we um, we get that sort of really cool sound. We have to palm mute for this bit, okay? So we have to palm mute. We have to rest the right hand down on the bridge of the guitar on the saddles so that it muffles the note and mutes the note a little bit. And then there's a picking pattern to this, and I'm going to show you that. It's going to go... What makes it sound cool is obviously that delay in the background. The delay sort of like bouncing against the notes that you're playing. It gives it a really cool effect. So you're going to do finger two and finger three on the A and the D strings. Uh, and then you're going to go... All right, so that picking wise is going to be the A string down. And then D string, down, up, down, down, up. So down, down, up, down, down, up, and then repeat. As I said, rest the palm of your hand, so the fatty part of the hand, down on the saddles of the guitar. If you come too far this way, you're gonna mute it too much and just get this, which sounds horrible. Too far that way, you're not gonna hear it at all. So you wanna be sat right on the saddles of the guitar. All the guys tuning in at the moment, like there's some new people watching this evening, feel free to say hello, I can see your names. Feel free to say hello, and I said I will shout you out and say hello back as well, wherever you're watching from. Let me know where you're watching from. It's really interesting. Sometimes people are watching from like America and miles away. Uh, so do let me know where you're watching from. Uh, so it goes. And then we do two on the D string. Open A. Take the palm mute off for those last notes. So. So just, I'll just go back over that picking pattern again. So it's down, down, up, down, down, up. And then the final time it goes. It sends on the two as opposed to doing the open string. All right. I'll answer any questions about this a little bit later just as we finish the video. So don't panic. If you've got any questions, feel free to ask them later on. Um, and then the chorus, which is the final bit we're going to look at in part one today, the chorus goes like this. So the chorus is going to go three, two, one, like a staircase chord on the D, the G, and the B strings with fingers three, two, and one. So you're going to go open B, one, three, open high E, three on the B, one, two. So you sort of walk up to the high E, open E string, and then back down again. So. Use the whammy bar and then three, two, one, zero, one, three, open G. Then we're going to slide up with the third finger on the B string from three to five. Use the first finger to be three on the high E string, five again on the B, then five again and slide up to eight on the B, and then six on the high E string, and then eight on the B. So it goes. Bar, and then it goes exactly what you did on the first time okay so exactly the same thing again and then you go back to the pre-chorus which is the and that is all of the parts we're going to learn this evening okay I'm going to give you a week between this lesson and next lesson next Thursday 8 p.m. A week, you're going to have a week's time to piece this together. I believe everyone who watches this, everyone I know is at the level that they're at, they can all learn this. It's a bit of a challenge for all of you. I'd really like you all to participate in this. Between now and next Thursday, 8pm, when I'm going to teach you part two, I'd like you to master part one. All of the guitar stars in the group, in the paid group, will have all of the full tablature, the whole backing track for you to, to help you with your practice. Um, however, I would just advise you just do part one for now, okay? Try and limit yourself. Even though you've got the full tablature, so you've got all the answers in front of you, just try and master that part one, okay? Just work really hard on that part one, get it sounding really good, ready for next week, and then I'll teach you part two 
and you can bring all the two parts together and play with the backing track. It's a real party piece, as I said, it's definitely one you want to be learning, definitely one to tick off the list. Um, even if you don't know the song, like if you're younger and you may not even know the shadows, people will recognise this song. It's so recognisable, you'll hear it many places, even if you don't know the artist or the name of the song, you will recognise the tune. Okay, So it's a really good one to, to learn and impress your friends with. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions about tone, uh, guitars, music, anything in general, or about this piece of music that you want help with, please do ask now, okay? I uh, said so you feel free to comment afterwards as well when I finish the live stream. I will get back to your messages. Um, but if you do it now, then you literally get my answer immediately. So instead of thinking until maybe later on this evening or tomorrow when I get back to you, um, uh, what's the answer to that question? I'm not sure what it is. Just ask now, you know, ask live. Um, and I will give you feedback straight away, which is always the best. Best type of feedback. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions at all? Feel free. Thank you everyone for watching this evening. It's a really great bunch of people watching this evening. So thank you very much. Appreciate you all tuning in. Yeah, that was a real quick one. I've done that really quickly. Um, so if you do have any questions, as I said, feel free to, to fire away and ask any questions that you might need to to help you out learning this song. But I'm setting this as a challenge from me to you. Can you do this? Can you all do this for next time? Just learn part one up to the end of the chorus, ready for next time when we look at part two. Um, yeah, see if you can do that. So it'd be fantastic. And all the guitar stars got a step ahead because you've already got the full tablature and you've got the backing track to practice along with, which is a good part number one. Excellent. Cool. Does anyone have any questions? So I'm going to open up some questions, give you guys some time to think of some questions. Also, it doesn't have to be questions as well. I put out on the guitar stars group today, like give me some feedback of lessons you want to see. I'm here every Thursday evening at 8 pm teaching you guys to play and I plan all the content and I know what I'm doing probably about a month ahead. But I'd love to hear what you want to see, what you want to learn, what you want to know about. What's that one question that's bugging you that you've never sort of had the balls to ask a guitar teacher? Or not, wrong way to put it really, wrong, wrong wording, but just maybe you've been too nervous to ask somebody because you feel like it's a silly question. You know, we all get like that. Um, so whatever that question is, it's not silly, drop it in the comments um, and ask it. And, I, and I'll do my best to, to, to answer that question. And if it's a lesson you want to see on that question, if it's something I think I can go in further detail with, I'll keep that answer for the, um, I'll give you a brief answer, but I'll keep the rest of the answer for a full live video. So I said, this is all about you guys and giving you some real value. Um, it's completely free, as you know, if you watch these live videos. Um, when do we learn the walk? <laughs> Tune in for part two, Ian. I'll have to get a full camera length going up like, you know, I'll have to change the camera angle for to go to catch my walk. The funny thing is, Ian, when I was nine and I was gigging this sort of material, when I was going out gigging, when I was in, going into pubs, and they wouldn't let me in the pubs because I wasn't really old enough, they're like, who's the entertainment for this evening? And they're like, it's that little ginger chap over there. And they're like, what? He can't come in the pub, he's not old enough. And he'd be like, well, he's playing this evening, you booked him. Well, we thought he was like, you know, older, but no, I was nine. Um, I used to do the Shadows Walk, I used to do that. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say I used to do the Shadows Walk at my gigs. Um, and there's footage of this as well. I'm never going to show you guys, but there's footage of this. My dad plays it like every Christmas pretty much. Um, no, he doesn't. Not every Christmas, but he does pull it out every now and again to embarrass me. He showed my wife a few times, which is quite embarrassing. Um, yeah, so there are some embarrassing videos probably out there somewhere. Um, but I know my dad's got copies of this. Um, for, <laughs> if you guys ever want to see that and you want to laugh. Uh, is there any chance you can play a bit totally clean as I have no pedals? Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's not going to sound as I said. It's not going to sound the same without any pedals. So if I take all of the pedals off, I'll take the delay off, I'll take the reverb off, and I'll, I'll leave the compressor on, because that's not really doing much apart from helping sustain the notes. Um, and it's very dry. You can hear now, there's a complete difference. So, Like to me, that's literally dead. That is like my idea of hell. I wouldn't like to play like that because that's so dry. There's no effect on that at all, so. It's just so dead, there's nothing to it. I could, it's really struggle for me to play like that. So, if you haven't got pedals, you work with what you've got, if that's absolutely fine. If you haven't got it, you work without it. But, because I have got it, I definitely want to use it. Because it's it's very important to be like to sound like Hank Marvin, he does use his pedals, so we try and, um, try and replicate that sound. Uh, next Shed, yeah, Paul. So Next Shed is the first Thursday of every month. Um, is that what you're asking? I think you're asking when the next one is, so the next Thursday. Um, yeah, now Brendan, yeah, that's a good one, Ian. I think, Brendan, you do have a Yamaha, so you can, you don't need any pedals. That echo on your Yamaha, as Ian is saying, you better get a really quite an authentic tone on that. So yes, 
Ian is right. The, the Yamaha you've got, Brendan, you've got everything you need to get that, uh, that Hank Marvin tone, 100%. Um, but yeah, next shed, uh, Paul, is the fir first Thursday of, it's always gonna be the first Thursday of every month, unless I say otherwise, and that's normally when I'm gigging, unfortunately, and I can't make the first Thursday. However, the next one is definitely the first Thursday. I'm just gonna check the calendar for you a minute. Um, what are we in now? September now, so the next one's gonna be October, and the first Thursday in October is the 30th, oh uh, no it's not, hang on, yes it is. Yeah, the 30th, no. No, can't be. Hang on, what am I on about? It's been a long day, sorry guys. Um, the first one is, I believe it's the 7th. It's the 7th of October, but keep, keep an eye out for, um, I don't know what I was about, the 30th, Jesus. Um, the 7th is the first week in October, the first Thursday. Um, but do keep an eye out, I do make an event. There is already an event out, I think I've already made for this. So look on our page and you'll see the events. I always make an event for the shed so you guys can check what date it is. But it'll always be the first Thursday of the month, unless they say otherwise. Um, some good news on the shed as well. The guys that come to the guitar shed, or the shred shed, or the guitar club, whatever you want to call it. Um, we might potentially be able to move back to Somerdale after lots of nagging and whinging. We might be moving back to Somerdale. Um, it might not happen for the next club or even the one after that, but the, the conversation has started and it was actually a very positive answer. So we might be moving back to the main Somerdale building, which will be a much bigger room and give us much more space um, because it's fantastic, but the shed is starting to grow. We're starting to outgrow the shed basically, okay? We didn't have, we've had new members turn up the last club and um, we had some of the members unfortunately couldn't make it, that normally do come. So I was worried that if we had the new members that turned up last time, plus the members that already come normally, that's gonna be really at over full capacity. So the shed's only very small uh, and we've already got a good number of people turning up. So hopefully, as I said, the, we're in conversation that I'm hopefully gonna move back to the, the full pavilion so we have a much bigger space to, to do that in. But I'll let you know. As soon as I get any more details on that, you'll be the, everyone will be the first to know who um, comes to the shed anyway. But it will be great. And it's always great to good to see you guys. It's fantastic. I really enjoy teaching at the shed. I really just enjoy it. You guys are fantastic. We have a great laugh. Um, and everybody participates and gets involved. I really love it. It's really fun for me to teach. So thank you. Um, yeah, any questions at all? I think I've answered everything. I've, I'm not sure I've missed anything. Let me just check. Um... Thank you very much, Jonathan, I just missed that. Sorry, thank you, my family are, are very well. My dad, unfortunately, has, um, well, he's, ju he's just had COVID, but, um, which is always a worry, isn't it? Like when you hear your parents, and my dad's like 67, when you hear like your parents has got COVID, it's a bit sort of like scary. Um, but my dad has been absolutely fine. He's lost his taste, sense of taste and smell, and he hasn't got back yet, unfortunately, but he's been absolutely fine. He had a little bit like a coldy, fluey thing. Um, tested positive, but he is absolutely fine now. So um, yeah, so thank you very much, uh, Jonathan, for saying that. My my family are fine, uh, and I hope your family are well as well. Also, um, cool, excellent, guys. Any further questions? As I said I'm not in a rush to shoot off, but if there's any further questions, I'll feel free to answer them. Uh, if not, as I said, this video unfortunately will disappear from the main page but it will re return in the Guitar Stars group, okay? That's important to make sure the Guitar Stars are getting the content that they, they pay for. So it will revert into the Guitar Stars group and it will go alongside the tablature and the backing track. Cool, thank you very much. So what are we doing next week? Well, you know what we're doing next week. We're doing part two of Apache, um, which I'm really looking forward to. So spend your time this week, if you can, on a little bit of practice, see if you can get the part one down, uh, ready for next time I see you next Thursday at 8 p.m., We'll look at part two and then we'll put the whole thing together. Right guys, thanks very much for watching this evening. Wayne, if you're still watching this evening, I will see you tomorrow. Uh, and anyone else I'm teaching tomorrow, I don't think I'm teaching anyone else who's watching. Uh, two in the morning, but I don't think they're the guys that are on here. I don't think they are. But Wayne, I know I'm seeing you in the afternoon. Um, so I'll see you tomorrow. Um, but everyone else, have a fantastic weekend. Thanks for watching once again. And I'll look forward to seeing you next week at 8pm. Bye for now guys. Take care.